I like to run. No, scratch that. I don't like it. I need it. At least that's what my therapist and my best friend says. Run to clear your mind, Dr. Tanner says. Nah, run to have that smoking bod so you don't have to be alone, Kelly, my best friend says. All are true. Well, not so much about the being alone part. I kind of like that. Keeps me from having more issues than I need. I don't need a man or a woman in my life other than who I already have. Hell, I already have to go to therapy twice a week and run four times a week to keep me from grabbing that checker at the fast stop that wouldn't get off her phone long enough to ring up my gas. Oh, I really wanted to clamp my long fingers around her snarky, gum-chewing, too-much-makeup-wearing face and squeeze until her head popped like a grape, feeling her eyes squelch when they exploded between my knuckles just to shut her up. But I didn't. I couldn't. So I run. <sighs> to keep from letting my inner issues come out. It's amazing. The feel of the wind in my face, the thwap of the concrete as my Nikes hit it, the thump of the bass in my ears as I round the second corner. Yeah, it's heaven. Or at least it's not hell. Not for me. And not for anyone else. Ah, look at that, Pete. A voice pulled me from my zen-like state even over that pounding of the beat in my music. So I slid a headphone out of one of my ears and cocked my head in the direction of the voice. There. Across the street, three guys on the corner, and they were looking at me. Shit. Don't stop. Just keep going. They're dicks. Just ignore them. I see that, Stevie. Looks kind of juicy. I slowed down, not quite listening to my inner voice. Shit, shit, shit. Plump and juicy like a butter bowl. They all started chuckling, and I took in a deep breath before turning to face them. Leave me alone. I said calmly and quite easily, which was impressive. That was all that came out, judging from the fire that I had building inside of me. But why, Plumper? I'm just saying you have a juicy looking ass. That's quite a compliment. Boiling. My blood was boiling. But I just stood there, blinking slowly and not moving as the Neanderthals sauntered across the empty street toward me. She got some thick thighs, Pete. The one called Stevie, as his ugh, tall, smelly frame suddenly hovered over me. Please stop, I managed to hiss out as I flinched when he touched my hair and gave it a sniff. So I seen you running the other day. You looked pretty into it. Made me wonder what's going on in your head of yours, Pete said. And I narrowed my eyes at him and never looking away as he started the predator encircling his prey movement. Back off. I'm warning you. I actually growled. This might be harder than I expected to keep any issue from surfacing. I needed to move. Just walk away. Nobody gets hurt. Be the one to walk away. They are dicks. Nobody special. Just, how about, no, Pete said, getting up in my face and grabbing my arm. That was when something switched on in me. On or maybe, hmm, off. 
Either way, I was not in control of the actions that I did. Okay, I whispered in a voice that sounded like me, but wasn't me. Well, it wasn't really a whisper. It was more of a, I, I don't give a fuck kind of voice. Taking a step back, I smirked as I pulled them in between the abandoned houses we were next. Oh yeah, the two I knew their names, Stevie and Pete, were surprisingly ready for action. The third guy hadn't said much. Probably just hung out with these guys because they made him, or maybe he was related. No matter. Wrong place, wrong time. As they made it into the darkened area, Stevie and Pete made no qualms about what they wanted. But what they wanted and what they got weren't even going to be close. Petey didn't even notice my eyes grow black or my teeth elongate before I was able to pierce his throat and pull his Adam's apple out, crunching it between my smile. <clears throat> I chuckled and grabbed a handful of Stevie's crotch and pulled it free as Pete bled out at my feet. What the fu- Yum! I gleefully gurgled in between sinewy bites when and then I turned to the third guy, just frozen, standing there watching me as I took one step, then another, slowly lumbering over his friends. Listen, lady, I don't... I... I don't want... I chuckled as I licked my fingers clean. You don't want... what? Any problems? Issues? Yeah. He stumbled backwards. And before he hit the ground, I jumped forward, grabbing his shirt. You picked the wrong friends. My growl was deeper as I pulled him close. You won't get away with this. I could smell every bit of him, his fear, the sweat pooling at, the top, at his top lip the urine filling his underwear, the smell of victory. Pulling him to where his ear touched my lips and I trailed my tongue over his gauged earring. What a bet. Two days later. Walking in through the double glass doors of the dining diner down the street from my apartment, I pushed my hands down the front of my thighs to smooth my skirt. The incident that happened earlier that week was all over the news. Not that it was a huge surprise, but they had it all wrong. The bodies of three unknown males were found crushed to death in the car compactor at Pete's Toe and Scrap at the east end of town. It is suspected that one is the owner, Pete D'Agostano, and possibly could have been a drug deal gone wrong, gone very, very wrong. More details when we have it. The reporter's voice trailed off as I moved up to the counter and smiled at the man who greeted me. Hey there, detective, the usual. I smirked and pulled my badge off my belt and laid it on the counter as I slid down next to my partner. Nah, Jerry, just a water. And stop calling me detective, I told you. Call me Lilith. He nodded and smiled, and I turned to the big, burly man to my right. So what's new? I said, as Kelly, my partner, and my best friend, 
of more years than I could count, turned to me and nodded as his head turned to the television. The captain wants us to take that case. What case? I said, taking a slow drink of the water as Jerry handed it to me. The D'Agostino case. He thinks the mob's involved, or maybe the cartel. Could be a high profile. Just the thing for you to have as your last case right before you up and retire and leave me to train a rookie while you bask in the sun in Jamaica. I arched a brow and smirked at him as I looked at the television as they flashed pictures of the three douchebags on the screen. Maybe. Looks a little open and shut. But it might be something fun to sink my teeth into.